You know what you're listening to? You're listening to the Dean Team bringing the light of Islam right into your hearts. Follow us on Facebook at the Dean Team Sydney radio program and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Dean Team Sydney. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. I would like to welcome you all to another episode of the Dean Team. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all for tuning in. With us is our beautiful brother Muhammad al Khushaybi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum wa salamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Muhammad, how have you been? Alhamdulillah, bi khair. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you greatly for being with us. Today, today, my dear respected brothers and sisters, we will be speaking about our fourth and one of the greatest companions ever, and that is no other than Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. We spoke earlier, we spoke about Abu Bakr, we spoke about Omar, we spoke about Uthman. So please, if you haven't heard them, you can, uh, inshallah, you can find them on uh, YouTube or inshallah you can jump onto the Facebook page and uh, inshallah you will find the links for them there. But uh, we have reached Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, so uh, inshallah I will hand it over to Muhammad. Jazakum khair. Inshallah we'll be discussing the fourth of the rightly guided caliphs, Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. And as, and as Hablas has mentioned earlier and will mention again, we intend on highlighting only the main aspects of this great man's life. So as to ignite the urge of knowing more about Ali, radiallahu anhu. We want you to further your study about this man, so as to love him, and hence be with him, insha'Allah, yawm al-qiyamah, the day of judgment. As the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, al-mar'u ma'man ahab, the man is with whom he loves, that is, on the day of judgment. So then, who is Ali ibn Abi Talib? He is the cousin and close companion of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the beloved, the beloved husband of the Prophet's daughter, Fatima, radiallahu anha the father of Al-Hassan and Al-Hussein, and the fourth of the rightly guarded Khalifs who led the Muslim nation after the Prophet's death. As for his name and brief lineage, his, it is Ali ibn Abi Talib ibn Abdul Muttalib. He was the paternal cousin of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and shared the same grandfather of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Abdul Muttalib ibn Hashim. Ali's father was Abu Talib, the full brother of Abdullah, the father of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Ali's name was actually Asad. His name was given by his mother, who named him after her father, Asad ibn Hashim. This is referred to in the lines of the verse that Ali says, the, the lines of poetry Ali says on the day of Khaybar, when he said, when he was facing his opponent, he said to him, I am the one whose mother named me Haydara, like a lion of the jungle, frightful to behold. Abu Talib, his father, was not present when Ali was born. When he returned, he did not he did not like this name, so he changed it to Ali. Subhanallah. A little bit of the people knew that. His, so his real name is Lion, Asad. 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 His kunya was Abu Hassan, after his oldest son. Ali was born, but the correct opinion is, 10 years before the prophethood of Muhammad, and he was actually born inside the Kaaba itself. The only Sahaba, from my knowledge, to have this honor, to be born Inside the actual Kaaba itself, what a special, uh, what a special birthplace! <laughs> Imagine that. Allah Talk Allah. that up, can't you? As for his physical description, and again, I always highlight this point. It's very important to know how the Sahaba, you know, roughly looked like. So you can put a picture you now. You know, we're a generation, fortunately, about who loves entertainment, who likes to you know see what they hear more or less. He was of average height, if not more, on the shorter side. With wide black eyes, a handsome face like the moon when it, when it is full, a large belly, broad shoulders. Large belly? Sorry, I have to stop you. Yeah. Did you say a large belly? It gets better. <laughs> broad shoulders, large hands and neck, and the neck like a silver brocade. He was bold, with no hair on his head except at the back. His, be- his beard was large and thick. The bones of his shoulders were like the ones of a strong lion, and there was no difference between his forearm and upper arm as if they were one. If he held a man's arm, the man would not be able to breathe, and how strong his, his, his grip was. Even though he was somewhat fat, his arms and hands were very powerful. When he walked in battle, he almost ran, and he looked steadfast, strong, and brave. 
This description, brothers, and do not take me for it, is as Ibn Abdul Barr, one of the greatest scholars history has seen, found to be closest to the correct description of Ali. And his description is not from me, so don't hold me for it. So <laughs> Abdullah ibn Barr has actually, Ibn Abdul Barr Afan describes him as, or he found to be the, the closest narration to this man, this great man, Ali radiallahu anhu. I can't help but feel like I get the vibe. He's like a mini me version of uh, Omar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. You find that, uh, but I can't get over the large belly. I, 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 I really... don't know how large it would have been. <laughs> but, but here, yeah. Kamena, um, uh, just, just going on to that, uh, I think it's very important for the brothers and sisters that uh, when the Arabs used to describe one another, it's very hard to sort of translate it into today's terms, especially because even the Arabs back then, what they translated fat used to also mean strong, physically built. So here you find that um, here you find that uh, Ali's forearms were like his upper arms, and that when he held, so this is obviously speaking about strength, which would mean that he was a very muscly man. And uh, and so so you know it's 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 very hard to give you an accurate because some, sometimes they used expressions to mean something else. But uh, I think we do get the picture that he wasn't very tall, but he was obviously a very very strong man. Exactly. So, so, point As for his life before Islam, it was actually during a crisis Quraysh was facing before the advent of Islam that the Prophet وسلم, along with his uncle Al Abbas decided to take responsibility of some of the children of Abu Talib. And that was because Abu Talib, his uncle, had many children with very little wealth. So Muhammad وسلم, took Ali and Al-Abbas took Ja'far, the brother of Ali. Was this, uh, sorry Muhammad, yeah. was this something common then? Allah, I'm assuming it is, يعني, especially back then, the, the relation, the ties of relation was such a strong thing. If they'd seen somebody in need, they would rush and hurry to help that person in need, especially if it's like an uncle or a cousin or a brother. Because so, here you find that uh, here you find that you find that they were very happy to take one of the family members under their wing and not yani not or you know come come over and have a meal yeah, at my house. Looked after like it son. was halas yani he's coming, he's living with you, you know, and you raise him more more or less. This, this actually uh, this idea was initiated by the Prophet ﷺ, and again the Prophet ﷺ is who he is. You know him to be the best of the examples. So do not be surprised if it was initiated by the Prophet ﷺ because he is Allah said, <laughs> and really on a great or said no. a great example of modesty. It was uh, through this stage of life. That Ali, anhu, even before Islam, was made custom to the great qualities of the Prophet ﷺ. And hence, even though at a young age, was able to learn and carry traits of the Prophet ﷺ to become the great man he would become. Again, one is to know or to realize that Ali was only 10 years old before the prophethood. And hence, not much can be talked about before his Islam. No. As for his becoming a Muslim... There is a dispute among among the scholars as to who was first to enter Islam. Yani unfortunately, these days we want to know who was the first and who was better. Was Abu Bakr or Ali that became Muslim first? That's because it's agreed upon that Khadija was the first of them all. <laughs> no, so imagine. subhanAllah, a woman has yeah, taken that title, subhanAllah. our mother, subhanAllah. But the best answer I was able to find is, is given by one of the scholars who said that the first woman, look at the adl, the justice of this saying, the first woman to enter Islam was Khadija. And the first child was Ali. Listen to the point. Child was Ali. And the first man was Abu Bakr. And the first slave was Zayd ibn al-Haritha. So he's come up with a very, very political answer <laughs> that sort of really... He's given everyone the privilege he's of He's given first, everyone his right, subhanAllah. Closing that gap of ikhtilaf, dispute. And that also, my brothers, is a very important point. Us youth, we like to, يعني, we get rowdy sometimes, we get angry. We need to understand the bigger picture is more important than our no. disputes. No. It is recorded that he became Muslim when he had seen the Prophet ﷺ and Khadija praying and then asked, asked them, what is it that you're doing? The Prophet ﷺ then invited him to Islam only to accept the following morning. And he didn't accept straight away, he got the information, as a, he actually confirmed with his father and then the next morning he was told or he entered Islam, as I remember reading. The you know, subhanAllah, you know what I find very, very interesting about this is that even at the age of 10, you know, just like how we were saying, bef- you know, just how we were saying uh, when we were speaking about Uthman, that you find at a very young age that they reached a very prominent, um, right? But here you find that a 10-year-old, even Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he explained 
He explained the situation to a 10-year-old, right? And then he went over it, and then the next morning he was ready. Yeah, and he, you know, don't don't think, oh, you know, 10 years old. Don't think our 10-year-olds, you know. This is something that's very, very important. Don't don't think, uh, you know, some young kid who's sitting on the internet. No. This, yeah, and he, you know, he addressed him like a full-grown man, and he put, put it forward, and he accepted. Unfortunately, so these days, our youth are treated like babies. Yeah. And you need to understand that a, a man will be who he is when he grows up the way he was treated, the way he was dealt with as a young guy. No. Hence, we need to look at our, at our youth, our young youth, like a 10-year-old, give him responsibilities that he can handle so as to make him the great person he will be, inshallah, in the future. Allah. Inshallah. As for sacrifices for the deen, again, we'll mention some, like we've done with the previous uh, sahabi. Uh, as for the sacrifices before the hijrah, that is in Medina, no one can deny, yeah, Abdullah, that the greatest sacrifice one can make is that of his life. I will set the scene for you. Ali, anhu, at the age of 23, was told by the Prophet وسلم, to sleep on his bed. It was the night the Prophet وسلم, and Abu Bakr were planning to migrate to Medina. The thing is that Quraysh, upon hearing the news of the Prophet's migration, planned an assassination of the Prophet that same night. So Ali, while lying in the Prophet وسلم's bed and covered in his coat, knew that any second now could be his last. It was his ultimate trust in the Prophet ﷺ and in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that made him so brave and confident that no harm would come to him. Just as the Prophet ﷺ had informed him before giving him the task. Of course, Ali was roughed up a bit by Quraysh. Yani he was beaten up a bit for not giving them the Prophet ﷺ whereabouts after yani he, they found that it was Ali on the bed. Ah, this, but, is, this is actually news to me now, Muhammad. Yeah, exactly, so, yani, so, so. <laughs> yani after they had woken up and they found it's not the Prophet and they didn't kill Ali, they took him to the Kaaba and they roughed him up a bit asking for the whereabouts of the Prophet. No. He didn't give him up, obviously. And it's only after that beating up Sage that they let him go. They knew they were going to get anything out of him. And he himself migrated to Medina. The point being made is how such a young man, only 23 years old, was courageous enough, strong enough, and entrusting enough to face this situation. This is for our youth to hear, ya shabab and nisa. It was Ali's absolute love for the Prophet wasallam and for the deen that gave him this determination and ability to sacrifice his own life, just as the Prophet wasallam was in, uh, informed. You know, um, you know, if we can just take a moment here, I think maybe, uh, maybe... Yeah, and for the brothers and sisters, let's sort of try and live the moment here, all right? You've got a man who, who, yeah, and the whole community has set an assassination out. Not only was it an assassination, but they had pledged and made it clear that for the one who brings Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, for him is a hundred camels. And maybe we don't know what a hundred camels is, but that's Yani. You, your family, your friends, your generations to come are set for life with a hundred camels, Yani. That's huge. And then the Prophet of Allah is planning to migrate and he knows that the people of Quraysh are after him and he brings Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Yani, you know, these people that are coming into the house, they're not coming to play out of Amir. They're coming because they mean business. And he's telling Ali that I need you to stay and you have to sleep in my bed, right? Yani, this is this is a man who openly, yani, this is suicide. <laughs> really, that's what it is. It's nothing short of suicide. And yet Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu was prepared to be in the house and be in the position where others were assuming they will find Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, you know, it is said, it is said from, from, the, from the stories that they came and they uncovered. Yeah, and had they not uncovered, who were they assuming to find? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So Ali was there, covered up, and really it was moments away, he could have just started having these swords going straight into him. And yet yeah, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was found there sleeping, right? It was said that years later when Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he became khilaf, you know, <laughs> when, when he actually became the ruler, that some of the tabi'een asked, that how were you sleeping in such a state? System, by Allah, it was the best night's sleep I had ever had. You know, so, so you know, Allahu Akbar, yani, even at such a young age, you see the eagerness of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu and how much he loved the Prophet. Because it is nothing other than love that would make a man take such a position and play such a role. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And this actually reminds us of a hadith the Prophet said, 
this is Ali يعني, proved for us. He says, the Prophet says, None of you is a believer till I am dearer to him than his child, his father, and the whole of mankind. And this love that the Prophet is actually mentioning is the an obligation on every Muslim. يعني, it is wajib, it is obligatory on every Muslim to love the Prophet more than himself, more than his child, his father, and the rest of mankind. So, um, as for the, the um, sacrifices after the Hijrah, Imam al-Nawi recorded that Ali anhu did not miss out on a single battle with the Prophet ﷺ except for the battle of Tabuk. So he was there. He was he there was for there everything. From everything except Tabuk. He was always at the forefront in the battles and would never refuse a duel. I'll leave you with an incident Ali reports in the battle of Uhud. Yani of, of all the duels that he faced, Ali actually mentions one of the, the duels he had with uh, uh, Mushrik. Jews were يعني, Sorry, uh, to yeah. face off of an opponent, yeah. opponent before this the is, this starts. was this was actually for for the wars back then this was extremely important because this usually set the atmosphere this yeah. usually set the tone right for the parties that uh, you know when the uh, two armies would come to face one another usually what used to Show happen strength, yeah. and I'm sure and I'm sure you've seen it in the movies where uh, usually the army would send its best fighter to face the other army's best fighter. And this would take place while all the others watched. And then depending on who killed who, this would set the tone for what was to come after. Again, this is the Battle of Uhud. So the fighting began with a duel between Ali ibn Abi Talib and Talha ibn Uthman, who was carrying the banner of the polytheist. Yani the person carrying the banner is usually the one, the main man. If he yeah. goes down, it's a, it's a mishkil, it's a problem. <laughs> Musiba. He asked for a duel several times. And this man, the, the kafir, is asking for a duel. Who's going to face him? Who's going to face him? Several times. And Ali ibn Abi Talib, anhu, at the end, said, by the one in whose hand, and he went out and he said, by the one in whose hand is my soul, I will not leave you until Allah hastens you to hell by means of my sword, Allah. or Allah hastens me to paradise by means of your sword. Allahu <laughs> Akbar. So, um, like how he already set the mood psychologically. psychologically yani. Yeah, and he's already won. <laughs> he's already won the battle psychologically. He's already won. So Ali strikes him and cuts off his foot, and he fell to the ground, exposing the scaffold his private parts. The man struck on the floor said, O son of my uncle, and he's, he's talking to Ali, I adjure you by Allah and by our ties of kinship and not to kill him. So he, Ali, retreated from him and he did not finish him off. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Allahu Akbar. And some of his companions said to Ali, Why didn't you finish him off? He said, He is my cousin and he adjured me by the ties of kinship when his private past became uncovered and I felt embarrassed for him. Oh, Subhanallah. Yani, not yani, even warrior, at a time, even at a time like respect, that. Subhanallah. Yani. We, again, we can continue to discuss all his courageous expeditions in the battles, but I'd rather have you, the listener, read or listen to it yourself so as to get all the details of this great man. Uh, as for his knowledge and honor of watching the Prophet, we're getting to the end of his life. Again, I've, I've skipped a lot, again, purposely, so the listener himself can uh, go back and do his research. And it's always for the listener who you know, find a better connection when he himself does this himself and you know, he gets that a connection. By reading or listening. No one can deny the amount of knowledge Ali radiallahu anhu had. He is the narrator of many ahadith and Quran exegesis in a tafsir. This of course is because he, like Abu Bakr, Umar and Uthman, were always around the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They would never leave the side of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if they didn't know something, they always went back to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Again, another great example for the Muslims, the youth of our time. To only accept of the deen and practice that of the deen which has been narrated by the Prophet ﷺ in an authentic hadith or the likes of it. And always to return to the ulama, the knowledgeable people who have ilm of the deen, to seek that knowledge, to seek the deen from them. And the best way طبعاً, is to seek that knowledge from a trustworthy, knowledgeable sheikh or student of knowledge. When the Prophet ﷺ died, again we're getting to the end of his seerah, Ali anhu was one of those who watched him along with Al-Fadl ibn Al-Abbas and Usama ibn Zayd. Ali radiallahu anhu said, I washed, I washed the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and I checked to see what is usually seen in one who is deceased, yani some marks or yani whatever happens to a deceased person. But I did not see anything. He looked good in life and in death. He said, Ali saying, May my father be sacrificed for the good, meaning the Prophet. How good you looked in life and in death. Ali radiallahu anhu was also among those who went down into the grave of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and buried him. You know, one can't help but imagine. You know, I was in Medina once and I was invited or told to experience washing the dead. 
So I said, I'll take it on. So I went to the place behind the haram, behind the, the Prophet's mosque, and then we were watching the dead people. And I happened to be there when a man came in after having a heart attack. And like Ali was saying, like I was looking for the marks or the signs of a dead person. When you see a dead person in front of you and you're watching him, like he's stiff and he's like his skin changes tone. It's like a, a bit of a, a grayish look and yeah. his face is sort of serious. So then when you see Ali's description, he's saying that he looked better in life. Or he looked good in life and in death. You can just imagine the peace that the Prophet was. Yeah. And not just the Prophet, you can just imagine any true, good, mu'min believer. If a person has his life full of ibad and Allah makes it easy for him, and how we would have looked also. يعني. So it's upon us to make يعني, life full of ibadah, full of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Prophet وسلم, etc. SubhanAllah, you, you, you find here that uh, you find here that uh, Ali Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu had a privilege that uh, not many had. In fact, only he and another companion had that he was married to the daughter of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he was married to the daughter of the Prophet and uh, not just any daughter, but he was married to his favorite daughter, okay. to the queen of the people of paradise, to the queen of the women of paradise. And uh, and uh, you find that also the lineage of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continued through the lineage of Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anna. And uh, of course we have the two most famous grandsons, um, Al Hassan Wal Hussein, and uh, you find that also Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was also one of the scholars, he was also one of the scholars of the companions. So, yes, he's known for his bravery, he's known for his bravery both on the battlefield and off, but he was also one of the scholars. Uh, in fact, in fact, uh, I remember, I remember one time coming across a statement of. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu where he says had it not been for Ali lahalaka Umar had it not been for men like Ali then Umar would have had a hard time um, uh, subhanallah Ali was the character who Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu would always go back to he would always ask him for his opinion he would always because he had depth he had depth of knowledge subhanallah in fact in fact in uh, in fact, in uh, one time when uh, Ali when Ali was the Khalifa, some men they came to Ali anhu with the intention of fitna. So they came to Ali mocking in such a manner, and they said to him, "You know, Ali, how come when Umar anhu, how come when Umar was Amir al Mu'minin, Islam prospered and it spread and we were conquering, and how come now that you're the Amir?" How come now we're going through these trials and tribulations? So Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu was that sort of character. He said, he said, because when Umar was Amir, he had men like me under him. But now that I'm the Amir, I have men like you under me. So, <laughs> so you find that he was, he was also a very, he was also a very articulate. Yani he chose his words very, very carefully. And he was someone who had very, yani he was always depth. There was a lot of depth in his words. There was a lot of depth in his wisdom. This was like the example just gave the story was after his, you know, when he became the Amir Mu'minin, the leader of the believers. A great deal of his life happens, you know, a great deal of information can be sought or read into after his khilaf, his taking leadership. And it's very important for the listeners to know that after Uthman or halfway through Uthman's uh, leadership, that the fitness started. The Prophet said that the doors of fitna will be open, or rather broken open, not to be closed again after the death of Umar. So this fitna, this tribulation happened during the life of Uthman, only to continue or to spread into Ali's Khilafah. Hence, you will find or read a lot of subhanAllah, yani amazing things in his uh, history of Ali after his leadership. And why important for the listener to always go back to reliable sources and get the information that you and it gives justice to the Sahaba and uh, respects who they were. And we've discussed previously Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman. So we need to understand who these men were and keep in light who they were with the information we'll read with Ali's biography that goes on further after the death of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There, there, there is this, uh, there, there is a uh, beautiful hadith it's an authentic hadith, though the name of the companion is not mentioned in the hadith. But I have heard, yani, I have heard many of the shaykh say that uh, the companion was Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. But uh, the hadith states that a man came to the Prophet of Allah and he says, 
he says to him, O Prophet of Allah, I love you. So the Prophet of Allah, he says to him, watch your words. Yani, measure your words. Go back on your words. Yani, go over it again. So the companion insists. He says to him, O Prophet of Allah, by Allah, I love you. Yani, there's definitely. And they say that this companion was Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And then the Prophet of Allah, he says to him, he says to him, if these words of yours are true, and you mean what you're saying, then get ready and prepare your armor. Prepare your armor. Why? He says, because verily poverty comes to the man who loves me faster than flood water reaches its destination. And this was, he was speaking to Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The other hadith that comes to mind when we mentioned Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu was, you know, in the hadith of da'wah, when the Prophet of Allah, he says to Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, in fact, he even mentions him by name in the hadith, he says to him, for wallahi, he says to him, for wallahi Ali, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses you to guide one human being, one man, if Allah chooses you to guide one man, it is better for you than a whole lot of red camels. Subhanallah. You know, so, so, so you find here, that Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu was a very, very, very special man. And he was one of the closest people. Yani this was a, yani really, this was a man who was adopted by the Prophet before, before Islam. And he was someone who grew up in the household of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I mean, you know, you know, subhanAllah, when we were speaking about Uthman, we spoke about the honor and the privilege of being married to the daughter. What about being married to the favorite daughter of the Prophet? You know, and he was the only one that had children whom the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he loved so much. He loved al Hassan and Hussein, he loved them so much. You know, so, so again, again, my dear respected brothers and sisters, these great men that we speak about, wallahi, and I take oath by Allah, we have not done any justice to them whatsoever. Nothing. In fact, if anyone listens to this, he will rip his hair out and say, you know what, we haven't done them any justice. But we wanted to touch on them. And we wanted to inspire, to ignite within us, within you, that get out there and learn about your fathers. Learn about these great men who were the companions of the Prophet. You know, this is a big statement. Sometimes we think they were companions, meaning these were the men whom Rasulullah chose to have around him. These were the men whom he chose to make them his companions. What an honor. What an honor. This, this is the man, Ali radiallahu was the man who he himself, he was prepared to die for the Prophet. You know, going back to the story that, that you had mentioned, and he chose, he volunteered. All the companions had made migration to Medina. He stayed back waiting for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He said, I will sleep in your bed. I will take your position. Let them kill me. No problem. How much love, how much sacrifice, you know? So again, my brothers and sisters, this is our job and it is our, wallahi, this is our responsibility to learn about these great men. Not only to learn about them, but to speak about them. You know, how beautiful would it be to one day sit in a gathering and instead of speaking about the footy or speaking about what you did on the weekend, or instead of speaking about this person or even worse, backbiting about this person and backbiting, you know, how about we speak about these great people? Wallahi, you cannot love people if you don't know anything about them. You can't, you know. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says in the very, very, very famous statement, he says, the one who's going to take a role model, then take a role model in the people who have died because fitna cannot come to them anymore. He says, take a role model in the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So inshallah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the information and to give us the knowledge and to give us the understanding so that we can learn about these great men and that we can learn more about our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad, jazakallahu khairan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for this great series. And uh, of course, to the brothers and sisters who have tuned in, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all for tuning in. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Follow us on Facebook at the Dean Team Sydney Radio Program and subscribe to our YouTube channel Dean Team Sydney